a graduate student uh, in New York and uh, in between working on my thesis, in between studying, sometime you needed a certain kind of distraction. The easiest thing to do was to walk down a few streets into one of these old revival houses uh, where there would be cinema from across the world showing. There are two, three films that stayed in my mind from that period of time. Uh, one was uh, Wild Strawberries, Bergman. The other was Apur Sansar, uh, Ray. And the third was La Dolce Vita. And uh, I think in all my life, these are the three films that I've returned to over and over again. And of all these, it is La Dolce Vita that still, maybe it's to do with the trajectory I've sort of uh, followed in my life that still continues to stay with me, resonate with me. And I guess part of it is natural. The central character is a journalist. And at one point in the movie, there is a clear articulation that the person is torn between journalism and literature. But it is also the story of this journalist in some ways dissent. And the dissent, if you start watching the movie carefully, is marked by some repetitive themes in the movie. The idea of stairs leading down, leading up is something that reoccurs over and over again in the movie. The movie ends with the, the main character, Marcello, uh, actually becoming a publicity man, a PR man. I guess in the world of journalism, that is dissent. That is, in some ways, the place where we all worry about ending up. The movie is in some ways to me not a movie about excess. It is not a movie about a culture that is decaying, but it is a movie about our world as it is shaped and viewed by the media. You look at each episode, it, everything exists only through the eyes of a journalist or the eyes of the camera, photographers. There is a sequence where Anita Ekberg, who plays the role of Sylvia, a Hollywood actress, is stepping down from the plane. There are cameras waiting for her. She comes out, waves to the cameras, and the cameras are not satisfied. They tell her to go back and step back in. That's something that we've seen today repeated over and over again, that there is no event that is authentic in itself. It's an event that is repeated and created for the camera. Everything, whether it is true prime minister's meeting today. There is also built into the story, the very term paparazzi, the celebrity photographers following celebrities around comes from this movie. And if you look at this movie, it is difficult not to detect the very seeds of Diana's death in this movie. Anita Ekberg, in one sequence, sits down with Marcello, the journalist, and they are driving off, chasing, chased by the paparazzi on the scooter, and she's telling him to shake them off, and they speed through this dark, closed space, and you can almost see that tunnel there. So in some ways, it presages the modern world as we see it today, as it exists today. But also, the very idea of journalism as a passive act, which without meaning to shapes reality, because people are just to the expectations of what the media wants, is also reflected in the individual character of Marcello. If you look at Marcello himself, he is passive. He never engages or initiates any act through this movie. There is a, this iconic image in cinema, probably one of the great moments, Anita Ekberg steps into the, I think it's the fountain, Trevia. And if you look at the first thing that Marcello does when he comes and sees her, actually he sits down to watch. He is a warrior, he's a journalist, he does not step into the water till she asks him to. And in that entire sequence, while wanting to, he does not touch her. They do not kiss. There is eroticism running through that moment, but there is no physical contact. There is not even the slightest brush of skin against each other. There is a sequence in the movie where you get a sense of uh, Marcello, the man, maybe what he wants to be, what his disappointments are. This is in his interaction with his friend Steiner, who's an intellectual in the old sense of the world. He has many 
passions. He plays the piano. You, you see him uh, delighted at getting a copy of an old Sanskrit grammar textbook. Um, and there is a sequence where Marcello and his fiancée, they visit Steiner and Steiner's family at their home. And it is a collection, it's a gathering of, in the loose sense, uh, artists, poets, people who clearly in that scene tend to go on, probably a little too delighted with what they are saying. And uh, Marcello steps out and talks to Steiner. He articulates it very clearly that maybe his life is going in the wrong direction, that the choices he has made are not the right choices. And Steiner tells him that he can get a publisher who would be interested in a book Marcello might write. He could get him a job that would get him away from, and he uses the term fascist for the newspapers Marcello writes for. And Marcello seems to listen to him. And in that very next sequence, He's sitting in a cafe somewhere far from Rome, typing. And that sequence stands apart because this is the only sequence in which Marcello is not a journalist. There are no cameramen around. And his fiancée calls him up. He tells her that he doesn't need the distraction. And he sits down in front of the typewriter and starts typing. He is interrupted by the music. He is interrupted by this waitress in whose face he sees the profile of an angel and this is a theme that the movie returns to at the very end and you get the sense of a man who wants to write and is unable to and at that moment you sense that something vital that he has believed about himself is something that he is not capable of there is one sequence which is startling and this point comes with the suicide of Steiner. When you see the first sequence in which Steiner invites Marcello and his fiancée to the house, uh, you see the two children, you see Mar uh, Steiner's wife and while you get a sense within Steiner of a deep delusion with the world, you do not get the sense of misery that would lead him to the step that actually you encounter later in the movie, that he has killed himself and before doing so, he has killed his two children. And in some ways, for Marcello, that is the last of all possibilities disappearing. There seems to be almost a sterility to intellectual life that ends in this way. Uh, his journalism has reached its own dead end and almost naturally the movie transits to the last section where you see a more aged, I would even say more decrepit Marcello at a late night party in a mansion uh, which has a certain meaninglessness to it, an attempt to distract oneself from the reality of what is happening around them. And this is where we find that Marcello today is a publicity man towards the end of the movie. And clearly he's made the transition and the realization that this world imagined by the media for us is also in some ways malleable and shaped by people in certain positions because there are, he clearly turns around and asks somebody in the room, um, don't you want to be interviewed? Don't you want to be placed in a magazine? And somebody turns around and says, what would you do for $400,000? He says, I would compare you to Marlon Brando. And he goes on in that vein. But the fact is that this is a reality that can be shaped by certain people. Today, his job is 
uh, to shape that reality, to exploit it in a way that a lot of the consumers of the media are not completely aware of. And uh, you can also see that this is something that he despises about himself. Uh, the sequence ends with them being chased out of the house by the host. It's early morning. They walk to a beach. There are fishermen at the beach. And they drag a net out. It's a stingray. And while everybody else seems to be talking about how much it is worth, what can be done with it. Through that last sequence, you see Marcello looking at the eyes of the stingray. And he, his last observation in that sequence is, it is still looking at us, it doesn't stop looking at us. If you want any other affirmation that this movie is, in my mind, about always being seen, always being visible about the media, I don't think you can get a stronger endorsement than this towards the end. The movie doesn't end here and I think there is a certain, I would say a weakness to this movie, there is a certain romanticism that takes felony to that last sequence where Marcello is sitting by the beach and he says the same girl that he had compared to the angel of Umbria in the sequence where he's writing, waving to him. He can't hear what she's saying. She seems to be calling to him, but they can't hear each other. And the movie ends almost suggesting that there was this possible life for him as a writer. Uh, but I wish the movie had ended at the stingray, as far as I'm concerned.